Okay, folks, it's time to explain why America is winning the trade battle with China. And to do this, I have to cut through the semantics clutter. I want to focus on three words and a lot of facts. First, paying, right? We know what paying is giving money in exchange for goods and services. We got that. So when goods are declared for entry into the United States, the CVP assesses duty, and that is paid by the American importer of record before those goods are released. So Americans write that check. Okay. Then absorb. Absorb is to take in and make part of an existence whole. Right? So China actually is absorbing the cost of the tariffs, and they do it in many ways. One, American importers are often getting much better deals than they originally negotiated. For instance, and this is a hypothetical, if an importer paid, let's say, 50 bucks for four of those LOL surprise OMG dolls, or let's just say a box of 12 baseballs, or a remote control car, they might be able to get the exporter to add another doll, more baseballs, or even another car, all at the same price. In addition, China lowers its currency. Remember, they've lowered their currency against the dollar, and that allows the American importer to even grab even more, maybe even another LLL surprise doll, you know, like the winter disco snowlicious fashion doll and her little sister. Now, all of a sudden, this order is substantially larger, but at the same price. So that brings us to the last word in this discussion, fungible. That's the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with another individual good or asset of the same type. You see, the money that's saved from all these extra dolls and the extra baseballs and the extra remote control cars means that the importer does not have to raise prices to match the duty that was paid on the imports because obviously they're going to make a lot more money because they sell these extra products. So you add the cost that is absorbed through all of these different parts from the supply chain, and it really explains why there's been a very muted impact for American consumers. Now, last night... It was revealed that China's industrial profits fell the most ever on record, almost 10 percent. This actually continues the string of declines. In August, it was down 2 percent. September, down 5.3 percent. In October, down almost 10 percent. Here's the bottom line. China is absolutely absorbing and losing this trade battle. And to put it in another way, it's just a play on words. Joining me now to discuss University of Maryland economist Peter Morisi. All right, Peter, that's my, that's my take on all of this. This is why when people go to Target this weekend, they're not going to see a massive increase in prices because it's been absorbed all the way back to China. Well, basic tax shifting. You know, in, in, in freshman economics, we show people that for some products, you know, the consumer pays a tax. For example, if you put a tax on insulin and it's made here, the consumer is going to pay a lot more for the insulin. But if you put a tax on a foreign product and they devalue their currency, they have room to absorb or reduce their profits, it's the producer that absorbs it. You know, and China, China is, its economy is, is not doing as well as it was before because it's so dependent on these exports. A lot of manufacturers are in trouble. China's having trouble unwinding its credit bubble. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy is doing fine. Look around. Does it look like the U.S. economy is doing badly? No. We haven't got much inflation. We've got lots of jobs being created every month. And China's really out of bullets. I mean, they can't hit us, hit, hit us with much more. But there's a lot more that Donald Trump can do to China to make its life miserable. So the, we, see, we see that the, their trade negotiator coming out almost daily saying, oh, we're very close to a deal, which does boost the stock market a bit and puts pressure on Mr. Trump. Because if there is no deal, well, let's face it, the stock market is going to adjust down a bit. Right. It's, it, it, it's his way of saying, I'm ready to deal. I'm ready to deal. But, but the bluster, to your point, has changed dramatically in the last six months. Going back to last year when this whole thing began, every time we said something, China came out and said, uh, we will fight you back. It's no big deal. American Americans were saying China's playing the long game. They can chill out for 100 years because they're so wealthy. And you know what? A hundred years ago, Mao went into the, into the mountains with a bunch of, with a bunch of ragtag uh, revolutionary, revolutionaries, and they can do the same thing now. No, they can't. They won't get out of these Mercedes Benz. They won't go back to bicycles. There's no way they can do that now. Well, I think that the presidency ought to look at Hong Kong. That could happen in Shanghai. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's right. But the thing is, is that there's not much more they can do to us. You know, they basically screwed down our exports. They, they really can't cut them down much further. They've hurt farmers. We have bankruptcies in the farm belt, and that's very sad. But they can't do it a second time. Uh, selling off the bonds. Heck, they sold off a lot of bonds from 2014 to 2016, a trillion dollars worth, and it had no impact because other people just bought them up. 
And, you know, then there's the rare earth minerals things. Well, they tried that with Japan in 2010. And guess what? Japan developed alternative supplies yeah. from Australia, yeah. and we can develop alternative supplies here. What is Japan going to do to us? Whereas, suppose we started treating China like Iran and cut them out of the payment system. How do you think China would fare if it couldn't get its hands on dollars? Yeah. No, I agree, Peter. And, by and the we way can freeze those bonds, you know. We can freeze those bonds. They're on an account at the Federal Reserve. We can say if they're traded, we won't pay interest on them. So yeah. we can make it so they're not negotiable. I, it's what? not going to. It's not. I mean, no, we I both understand. Know it's not going to go that but far. But what I'm I mean, trying to say point, is, if I, I look at we, Z's quill, it's empty. As, as I, I look at Trump's quill, he's got two dozen arrows left. Absolutely, and I don't think we're going to have to use any any of them. Peter, have a great not. Thanksgiving, buddy. Take care.